Crowded onto this ramshackle vessel are Eritreans, Somalis and Nigerians. They wanted to get to Europe to escape the violence raging in their countries. They wouldn't have made it if they'd stayed on their boat. The ship contains about 460 uh, people. It's very, very crowded. Uh, about 300 uh, of us we have in the boat and around the engine. So the engine is not working well. It's not able to cross the Mediterranean Sea by this boat. MSF has three ships patrolling the Mediterranean to rescue migrants. The teams provide them with first aid as many have skin ailments or suffer from dehydration. There are also numerous pregnant women and people who sustained injuries during their journeys. By the beginning of July, MSF had already rescued over 5,500 people. But once on dry land, these people, who are desperately seeking a better future, often find that the only prospect open to them is being crowded into already saturated reception centres. Peacekeepers, deployed by the United Nations, were tasked with defending civilians taking refuge in the Srebrenica enclave that had been declared a security zone. But in July 1995, Srebrenica fell to Bosnian Serb forces and 8,000 men over the age of 16 were massacred. Present throughout, MSF bore witness to these events and went on to challenge its own role in the enclave. Lorsque MSF a commencé à travailler à Srebrenica, ça s'imposait comme une évidence. Euh, 40 000 réfugiés euh, qui se regroupaient dans un petit village de 5 000 habitants, dans des conditions extrêmement difficiles. Tout ça justifiait pleinement que MSF y soit. En revanche, en connaissant la fin de l'histoire, on doit évidemment s'interroger sur la contribution apportée par MSF à la construction d'une sorte de décor de sécurité. Donc, euh, ce qu'on peut rajouter à la fin, c'est que euh, lorsque l'ONU déclare une zone de sécurité, il ne faut pas prendre ce mot à la lettre. Dès que l'on peut partir, il faut saisir l'occasion de partir. 20 years on, civilians trapped by conflict continue to live in enclaves under international protection, as in Central African Republic, or here in South Sudan, where the displaced civilians in this safe haven in Bentiu are not spared the violence that rages the other side of the barbed wire. Take this antiretroviral drug. Developed in a laboratory in the US and manufactured in India, it is being used in a hospital in South Africa. But getting there was a bumpy road. First, there's the patent. A new drug is generally patented for 10 to 20 years. During this time, it is meant to be marketed only by the laboratory that developed it and at a price they set in order to make returns on investment. But once the patent expires, the formulation becomes available to other laboratories, which can then manufacture a cheaper, generic version of the drug. Often, it is only then that medicines become affordable to developing countries. But 20 years isn't long enough for some laboratories looking to profit a while longer from the benefits of their patents. Some go as far as making just minor modifications to the formulation of their drugs or adding therapeutic indications in order to extend their patents. Another ploy, called data exclusivity, is applied to prevent generic drug manufacturers using the original laboratory's research findings. This forces them to conduct clinical trials on an already proven formulation all over again. It's time-consuming, costly and futile. But how to get around these obstacles when patients urgently need access to these essential drugs? One way is by opposing the granting of a patent. Take sofosbuvir, a drug used to treat hepatitis C. 
In France, a 12-week course of treatment costs €41,000, an eye-watering price for a molecule offering no innovation, according to aid agency Médecins du Monde, which has filed an opposition to the patent with the European Patent Office. Alternatively, there are international agreements that enable poorer countries to override patents when they consider that they run counter to patients' interests. Lastly, some countries have introduced legislation to push generic drugs onto the market, such as the case in Brazil, Thailand and India, among others. Indian law states that a drug's patent cannot be renewed unless it presents a substantial medical improvement. Consequently, India has now become the pharmacy for the developing world. The cost of HIV AIDS treatment is a good example. With the advent of generics, its price has dropped from $10,000 to $100 in less than 10 years. But several countries have in recent years set about trying to weaken the Indian legislation. Japan, the European Union and the US are using trade agreements in an attempt to protect their own pharmaceutical companies and their patents, to the detriment of the production of generic drugs. Médecins Sans Frontières has recently launched a campaign urging the Indian Prime Minister to stand strong and protect the manufacture of generic drugs. This is the only way to reach patients who depend on affordable drugs for their survival. Thanks to generic drugs produced in India, MSF is treating 200,000 people living with HIV AIDS, in addition to those suffering from tuberculosis, malaria and non-communicable diseases. Many more than the hundreds of thousands of sick patients receiving medical care from MSF will be affected by the threats hanging over India's patent law.